In this video I'm going to give you an engineer task and that is in placing an 11 row concertina wire obstacle. This is an anti-vehicular obstacle, anti-vehicle obstacle, but because it is made of concertina wire and pickets it also can be an anti-personnel obstacle depending on how well it blocks off the gap that you're trying to cover. An 11 row will typically be put in across a roadway in an area between constricting terrain like hillside which is what I'm simulating here or you have extremely thick trees as they're extremely thick they're large diameter trees and they're very very closely together right next to the roadways or you have say an elevated road with drop-offs right off the edges of the roadway that go down into uh, waterways like swamps or lakes or whatever. So right now I got hillside, a very uh, sh shallow or narrow uh, strip for grass and rock on the either side of the road and this is the roadway itself. Our roadway right now is dirt or gravel it is not paved if you have a paved roadway this probably won't work because you're going to have a hell of a time trying to put pickets through paved roadway this is really works best on dirt roads and gravel roads now what you need for in placing this obstacle is 33 long pickets 22 short pickets or anchor pickets 11 rolls of concertina wire, one roll of barbed wire, one log, and optional anti-personnel or anti-tank mines. Now you're not going to uh, put this obstacle where it can be seen from far away. You want it at a point where they're going to come right up on it and then it's going to be an O, uh, o fecal matter moment where they got to slam on the brakes, they got to stop. So, first thing you'll do, you'll come in, you'll put in three pickets for your first row. One on the edge of the roadway, one in the center of the roadway, one on the other edge of the roadway. And then you will also put in your two anchor pickets. These anchor pickets will be, well, within reason distance from these end pickets here. It'll depend on how close the terrain is. Your wire team will then come in. They will lay one roll of concertina wire across the three long pickets. Now that roll can extend between 15 to 20 meters maximum. If you're gonna have a longer distance that you're trying to cover than that, you'll want to double the amount of uh, concertina wire to 22 rolls, and you're gonna to have to add additional long pickets to maybe uh, 55 or so, give or take. Now after that uh, concertina wire is in, barbed wire team comes in, ties off the barbed wire, anchor picket over here, strings it over the top of the concertina wire, anchors it on the other side, they make sure to tie off that barbed wire to each picket before it ties off on the anchor picket. Then you come in, put in your next pickets, put in your wire, your barbed wire, and you keep going. Now when you get to your fifth row, These uh, rows here are in place the exact same way that these are. 
when you get to your fifth row, that's when you're going to put your log in. You put your log in between the fifth and sixth row. You do not want it in front of the fourth row or behind the seventh row. The reason for that, if it's too close to the front edge of the obstacle, it's possible that the breaching team can take their Bangalore torpedoes and ride it directly over the top of the log. It will not stop them. That reason that log is in there is to stop the Bangalores from coming in so that they have to do multiple breaches. So we get the log here, the breach team comes in, they put in their Bangalores, they can't lift it up over the log so they can only breach that half and then they got to remove the log and then breach the other half. And then after you get the log put in, you put in your remaining rows. Now each row, like I said, is in place the exact same way this one is. You'll put in your your three long pickets, your two anchor pickets, your concertina wire, and then the barbed wire over the top tying it off to the pickets. Now you can uh, strengthen this obstacle by adding anti-tank or anti-personnel mines. The anti-tank mines would be placed inside the roadway. Generally where the tires or the tank treads would travel. So we would maybe put an anti-tank mine here, maybe another one up over here, we might put another one up here, you know we could always put one directly across from it also on the other side over here and those mines will be buried in the roadway. They will not be surface laid. If you emplace any anti-personnel mines, they will be put on the edges. This little space here between the end long pickets and the terrain feature. Because right now all we got to slow a breaching team would be the barbed wire that's going to the anchor pickets. Well, what we can do, can put in bounding fragmentation mines. So we can put one in over here and then maybe string a tripwire across to a stake or to one of the pickets. Or we can put one in the front of the obstacle up here, buried, and we have our tripwires coming off at a V going to two stakes here. This is a uh, very simple obstacle. It goes in very quickly. A single squad can put this in, but it goes in quicker if you're doing it as two squads. I do uh, recommend that you learn how to put this obstacle in and practice it. Now, if you don't have concertina wire. All you have is barbed wire and say uh, fence posts, your garden fence posts, your T-posts or U-posts. Well you can still put in your 33 longer pickets and then your anchor pickets which are typically about uh, two foot in length. And then you just string barbed wire through the pickets like with the tangle foot. You'll go all the way across and zigzag all the way through and then you'll go back zigzag the other way. You'll go from low to high, high to low, you know, every which way and they're making a giant, uh, giant barbed wire tangle foot uh, spider web. And then after you get it run between those 33 pickets on the roadway, I would still go through 
tie off barbed wire on the anchor picket go over the top of the barbed wire on the pickets tie it off on the other side so you got that additional you know anchor so that the enemy just can't come through you know with say a forklift or whatever or a uh, front end loader come in here and then just lift the barbed wire directly off the pickets get that additional uh, anchorage in there uh, if you do put any type of landmines inside this obstacle you must include that on a minefield record uh, if I can find a copy of a minefield record report I used to have one I'll make a copy of it I'll show you how to fill one out I'll give you the form, num form number so that you can uh, get a hold of an electronic copy you can find them online I know I downloaded one somewhere if you ever put in mines landmines or potentially expect to have some of those minefield reports and fill them out correctly you must account for every landmine its exact position the reason for that is post conflict you know we really really do not want to end up like Vietnam or Cambodia or Angola after a conflict here in the US we don't want mines and booby traps all over the place and we don't know where they are so then we have huge swaths of land that cannot be cleared that was a uh, one extremely good thing by the German army in World War II is they had very hyper accurate landmine records so I think it was by 1949 every landmine that had been laid in Europe that they had the minefield record sheets for had been removed and I think the vast majority of them were removed by like 47 they only had a few left by 49 I know there are still some minefields left in Europe from World War II but there's not that many the ones that are left were uh, types of mines that could not be picked up by the mine detecting technology at that time or the minefield records had been lost so this is an easy obstacle you can find more information on this in FM 5-34 engineer field data now for all my engineer brothers in the Patriot and Militia movements always remember essay